Welcome everyone, uh, uh, Namaste, uh, very happy to be with you on this very important occasion and this very important topic for all of us, this topic of the sacrifice and karma yoga. Uh, as we know in the Gita, Sri Krishna already mentions this in the chapter 4, uh, he speaks to Arjuna in a very cryptic manner, he says that um, he revealed his ancient yoga, imam vivasvate yogam proktavan aham avyayam. This infinite yoga from the beginning of time I already proclaimed to Vivasvat. And Vivasvat is the lord of the sun. And Vivasvan manave praha. And Vivasvat spoke this to Manu. And Manu to Ikshvaku, who is the head of the solar dynasty of the kings. Evam parampara praptam imami rajar shayo viduh. And the Rajarishis knew this yoga over generations. Sakalene hamahata yoga nashta parantapa. But with a great time it got lost. The secret yoga, karma yoga. Sa evaya mayatedia yoga proktav puratanach. But now, my yoga, the secret yoga, which was revealed from the beginning of time and got lost in time, is revealed to you, O Arjuna, because you are my bhakta. And this is kind of interesting. You have to be a bhakta to get the secret of karma yoga. So what is this? ancient karma yoga what is the problem and why it is so important now i want to first to highlight the issue the issue is that um, unfortunately our inner and outer life are separated our inner being has its own law of existence in order for us to be perceptive of our inner selves we have to become inactive outside. We close our eyes, we stop moving, we stop thinking, we stop even breathing in order to dive deeper into our inner selves. The moment we start active outside, we lose that inner perception. So we can be either active or perceptive. And this is the psychological dilemma of human beings. Why can't we be perceptive of the, our inner being while being active outside? And this is the big question. This question is addressed in the Veda, in the Rig Veda, where the karmendriyas or the um, actions of our senses, what we call panis, steal our inner light and hide it in subconscious cave and the gods with Indra and Brihaspati and Agni come and destroy Vala, the subconscious cave, and release hidden treasures, hidden inner perceptions, which were stolen by our karmendrias, by our uh, organs of action. Organs of action are those which grow from inconscient and they can't but steal the light and hide it in their subconscious cave. They do not have any value for this light. They do not understand the value of this inner light, but they know that it can be a very good uh, treasure, which they can exchange for their own self-promotion. So they they crave it. And there is the whole hymn in the Rig Veda where it is said, when Usha comes, please let Panis sleep and not steal the light which the dawn brings to us. So this separation on the outer activities and inner perception is well known to us. The, all the training of yoga from the times immemorial, from these times of separation of inner and outer, was um, um, practiced. So in order to achieve inner perception, one has to become inactive, reject the outer activities and go inside. The moment one becomes active, one loses that perception. The same question was um, put by 
Pavitra to Sri Aurobindo, what should I do when, when I am inactive and perceptive, I receive and I have this presence in me, but the moment I come out from meditation and start doing something, that contact disappears, fades away. Sri Aurobindo tells him, you go slow, you keep the contact with the perception and do the activity slowly, nearly mechanically, keeping with perception and thus training oneself, one can bring the inner light into action. It's quite an interesting suggestion. Very similar thing was viewed by the Vedic Rishis who were inviting the higher powers of consciousness, the gods, to come down, bringing them down with their aspiration flame, to act within this frame to be activated while living in the body. So that's why Krishna in the Gita calls this karma yoga a sacrifice. This was the ancient sacrifice. Interestingly, in uh, Savitri, Sri Aurobindo also refers to this problem in this way. When Satyavan meets for the first time Savitri, he says, I looked upon the world and missed the self. And when I found the self, I lost the world. My other selves I lost and the body of God, the link of the finite and the infinite, the bridge between the appearance and the truth, the mystic aim for which the world was made, the human sense of immortality. And then he continues, but now, since you are here, Savitri, the Divine Mother, that golden link is, a link is established and the inner and outer can go together. So how then to be active and perceptive at the same time? And how to bridge this inner and outer awareness? Um, how to look upon the world outside without losing the contact within the inner self or to remain conscious within while acting without this is the major question which karma yoga addresses so what is interesting how Sri Aurobindo addresses this karma yoga i want to read to you a few of his aphorisms which are very much to the point to do works says Sri Aurobindo, in a close union and deep communion with the divine in us, the universal around us and the transcendental above us, not to be shut up any longer in the imprisoned and separative human mind, the slave of its ignorant dictates and narrow suggestions. This is Karma Yoga to work in obedience to a divine command, an eternal will, a transcendent and universal impulsion, not to run under the whips of ego and need and passion and desire, and not to be guarded by pricks of mental and vital and physical preference, but to be moved by God only by the highest truth only. This is karma yoga. To live and act no longer in human ignorance, but in divine knowledge, conscient of individual nature and universal forces and responsive to a transcendent governance. This is karma yoga. To live, be, and act in a divine, illimitable and luminous universal consciousness open to that which is more than universal, no longer to grope and stumble in the old narrowness and darkness. This is Karma Yoga. So you can see how fundamental and how supreme is this yoga. So Karma Yoga is the crown of all the yoga, of all the Purna Yoga of the Gita. Karma Yoga is the beginning, as Shri says, first step 
but it is also a final crown where the whole nature the transcendental and universal nature and individual force of or self once once one owns being is acting in accordance with the divine command um, so what is interesting in the gita uh, gita defines this karma yoga how to arrive at it by three major principles the first principle and the most important is the psychological freedom from the fruit of action so in order to do karma yoga one has to be free psychologically free from the result of action Karman yevadhikaraste ma phalayashu kadachana, these are well known lines. Ma karma phalahetur bhur, ma te sangostva karmani. It is, you have the right for the action, but not for its fruit. Don't be motivated by the fruit of a result of action, but also don't be tight to the inactivity inactivity be always in action but not determined or motivated by its fruit so for the action you have the right but not for its fruit karmendriyani samyamyaya aste manasasmaran indriyarthan vimurhatma mityacharak sauchyate this is the wrong way of doing karma yoga the one who restricts his karmendriyas his senses and um, sits with the manas with the mind remembering the fruits of action or remembering the the enjoyments for those uh, senses in vimurhatma he is bewildering himself mityachara he lives in vain or acts in vain he is called mityachara the one who does this yoga in vain so we can imagine and this is the biggest problem when we remove our senses from the object of sense from the enjoyment of the object of sense we do it inwardly in the mind by the mind and this is the wrong way of doing karma yoga uh, but he says yes to Indriyani manasa niyam ya arabhate arjuna karmendriya ich karma yogam asaktak sabishishyate. But the one who, um, who restricts his indriyas by the mind and by the karmendriyas, by the indriyas of action, does the action, the karma yoga, he is. Uh, the one who he excels, who is arriving at the success of Karma Yoga. So basically, we have to do it nearly mechanically outside, restricting, restraining our indriyas by the mind and allowing the inner spirit to reach through these uh, senses to the surface senses themselves become the mediators between the inner spirit and the outer consciousness and the final freedom which he offers Sri Krishna through karma yoga is the freedom from the actor prakritech kriyamanani gunaih karmani sarvashah Ahankara vimurhatma kartaha miti manyate tatva vittu mahabaho guna karma vibhaga yoho guna guneshu vartante iti matva nasajjate. So this freedom from the uh, sense of actor is the final freedom. So we have three steps which is very interesting to highlight since the time is limited. The first step is the freedom from the psychological attachment to the result of action once we do the action with this freedom we see many more possibilities of arriving at whatever the result we see that the all activities are done by prakriti herself and not by purusha we it is a first separation of purusha from prakriti second freedom Samatmam yoga uchyate, 
Yoga is the equality. It is the stepping back from the any chosen or preferable modality of action that I like to do it this way or that way, with these means or those means. I am not, how to say, any more claiming any preferable modality of action. So I choose any new modality, any new creativity, because I am not claiming that preference, this stepping back from the modality, first from the fruit, then from the modality of action, and the third is from the actor himself. I do not claim to be the actor of my activity, and then I see that everything is done by my nature. It is gunas which are rotating in gunas. Thus I see it is these modalities of nature are making movements, and me as an observer, Purusha, is now free within this particular modality of action. So this was a prophetic proposal by Sri Krishna to all of us in his Purna Yoga, which Sri Aurobindo adopted in his Integral Yoga. And by the way, Integral Yoga is Purna Yoga of the Gita. Hmm? Um, similarly, but differently a bit, um, this very activity of Karma Yoga is proposed in the Veda. The Veda is involving the higher powers of consciousness by our aspiration. We have to kindle the flame within the heart, which will bring down the higher forces of consciousness and makes them work within our individual framework changing our consciousness while living, breathing, acting, doing things. Yes? Well, the whole modality of our activities will change through the presence of those higher forces. This um, ancient modality of sacrifice, and sacrifice is nothing but making this profane life sacred, was lost in time. We forgot how to do it, as Krishna mentions in the Gita. But he revives this modality for us in his newly framed and with language fitting for our age, um, secret of action. Thank you. If you have any questions or references, please. Sure. Namaste.